Hi, I'm Bill Scott, President of Store Report. Welcome back to Store Report's Retail Store Management Training Series. I'm here today to solve a mystery. I hold in my hand an object. It's an object most of us use and are familiar with. Tens of thousands of convenience store retailers handle one like it every day. The object I am holding is brown in color. It comes in a brown wrapper. It's sold in grocery stores, convenience stores, over the counter, and in vending machines throughout America. Its ingredients include chocolate, caramel, and peanuts. It has a name printed in big blue letters right on the front for easy identification. Can you tell me what it is? Care to take a guess? If you said Snickers, it would be less than a lucky guess because Snickers is one of the world's best known candy bars. Consumers know it by name and its popularity. They know its taste, a few can recite its calorie count, the sugar content, and some of the vitamins. They also have a perceived value and that value goes up or down according to the circumstances. It simply says Snickers. That's the information that most consumers care about. They don't care when it was invented or by who. Consumers make a buying decision based upon this simple word Snickers. But wait, if that statement is true, how do we account for this? Is this still a Snickers? I bought these today at a local Dollar General and the price was 95 cents each. Not 99. Most convenience stores sell everything to the ninth cent. We'll talk more about that later. Aren't we taking the chance that consumers will be confused? Not at all. As long as the design and colors remain the same, people will recognize these as Snickers. Now let's turn them on their sides and take another look. Both bars have the same 12-digit UPC code. Imagine that. They appear in blue on the bottom left-hand side of the product. If we look at the receipt, we will see the numeric portion of the barcode printed under the instance of each sale, followed by a dash and the number 110, which means something to the retailer. It could identify the POS device of the store, but the 12 digits to the left of the dash identify either of these items as a 1.86 ounce Snickers, and there can be no mistake about it, regardless of the name on the wrapper. Most retailers and suppliers don't care about this UPC number as they do not use it to identify their inventory. Most suppliers assign an arbitrary six to eight digit number to items such as these that is used primarily for ordering and receiving between retailers and suppliers. Why? Because it's the way the supplier wants it. But suppliers are hurting themselves as much as their practice hurts their retailers. By doing so, we stand the chance of losing critical information. We will explore this in greater detail later, but as a retailer, the loss of the use of this UPC code is the primary reason for the ridiculously low profit being reported by the convenience store industry and also the reason nearly 70% of these stores are now run by 10, 1 to 10 store operators. Retailers and their suppliers only know if the product is a good seller. And if the manager allows the store to run out, it qualifies as a reason for a severe reprimand. But the manager shouldn't worry because his supplier stores enough of that product under his roof to feed the nation's homeless and then some. The fate of a 21st century convenience store relies on information. While the wrapper is the concern of the customers, the UPC number or barcode is the key that provides the retailer with the information he should be concerned with. And because of the way retailers are being trained to manage their inventory, it robs them of the ability to do so. There are virtually thousands of products similar to Snickers that occupy 152,720 convenience stores across America. And I hazard to guess as to how many grocery stores, theaters, and vending machines stretching 
from Portland, Maine, to Chula Vista, California, Hawaii, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. 30% of the inventory in your store accounts for 100% of your store in-store profits and is cross-subsidizing the losses for the other 70% that is there primarily to make your store look full. Your supplier makes money selling you that 70% and makes it harder for you to pay your rent, your utilities, your taxes, your ability to feed your family and hopefully buy your children a decent education. You're okay with this because some Harvard MBA said, with your limited knowledge and experience in accounting and merchandising, this is the best chance you have of seeing a profit at the end of the year. Overall, the industry in general supposes convenience store operators are not capable of doing better. So some 25 to 30 years ago, a tool based on common sense was employed. That tool has a name. It's called category management. You were taught not to dig deeper into the business of managing your inventory because something called category management was the accepted standard of managing inventory in your stores. They surmised you did not have the resources or the education to swim in the deep end of the pool. Be happy with your mere 2.1% profit and if you need more, cut your cost, downsize, get leaner and meaner. How does that work for you? It worked out for you. What category management did for you is it allowed others to make decisions for you. What products to buy, how to price them, how to display them, how to promote them, and even how much to keep in your store in the case of a zombie apocalypse. But what's the secret? How do we go from working 24-7 and barely staying afloat to building a convenience store business we can leave to our children or sell and retire when there is still time to enjoy life? In a retail environment, every item in your store is a tiny little machine that generates cash. It's your job to provide a place for it to work, and your employee's job is to watch over it while it's functioning. It costs you money just by being there. The annual carrying cost of a $2 item is 50 cents, plus the $2 you paid for it. If your inventory is not doing its job, it's stealing from you. If you are the average operator, you have two to 3,000 additional items in your store you have to worry about. Go to one of your stores. Take a look at all the excess inventory on your shelves and in your coolers and you will see why half of your profits are evaporating. You can stop this insanity right this minute if you'll do something about it. But how, you ask? Let's go back to our candy bar. Remember the 12 digit UPC codes on the candy bars? This number is the key to everything you need to know about managing your inventory. Pick those rusty, dusty bags and cans up and shake them. Ask them, what did you do for me today, this week, this month, this year? How long do I have to wait until you cease to be a strain on my resources? It will scare the hell out of your employees and they will scramble to get out of your path. We're going to be talking a lot about these little numbers throughout our course. Because more than anything else, my associates and I are going to teach you how to use them to animate these products and turn them into rivers of cash. We're going to teach you how to use these numbers to create a virtual consignment relationship with any supplier, knocking down carrying costs, out of stocks, overstock, shrinkage and theft, and best of all, we're going to do it without charging you a dime. I'll see you next time as we dig deeper into Store Reports Retail Store Management Training Series. And be sure and click that little subscribe button at the bottom of the video if you want to see more. And there's a little bell next to it. If you click on that bell, YouTube will give you a heads up when a new video is available for viewing. Write to us at storereportinfo at gmail.com if you care to make contact with our team. 
I appreciate it and hope to see you next time.